This is a story about a funny little magpie with an even funnier name, Penguin. This quirky young bird literally dropped into the Bloom family's lives and rescued them from despair. Everything was just caving in, it was, it was just awful. And then, you know, this little magpie fell from this tree mm -hmm. and so there was instantly this distraction of, of someone else in the family. The most unlikely of lifesavers, this magpie was able to show mother of three, Sam Bloom, there was hope, even when she couldn't see any. And in doing so, Penguin cemented her place in the Bloom's hearts and home. Six o'clock in the morning, she'd do this call at the back door because she wanted to come in. And so Cam would get up, let her in, and then she'd go into the boys' bedroom. Run down the into our bed and jump in and kind of fall asleep. Literally jump up, roll over, like cuddle, cuddle up, <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, feet go up in the air and you'd put your little fingers in her feet so she could hold on to something and then she would fall asleep. To fully understand how penguins saved the Bloom family, we need to go back 25 years to Sydney's northern beaches, where a young surfer, Cam, fell in love with the local baker's daughter, Sam. They shared a passion for sport and the outdoors, and once married, backpacked around the world together before their boys came along. Reuben, who's now 16. Good. Good. Noah, 15. <laughs> and Oliver, 12. Wanting to share their love of adventure with the boys, in 2013, they all set off for Thailand. How were the first few days of that holiday? We went swimming. And the weirdest thing is I remember thinking, wow, it doesn't get much better than this. And then we went over to the hotel and um, one of the boys spotted the stairs going up to the, like a rooftop. And so we went up there and I don't remember it. I don't even remember walking up the stairs. Hmm. I think I wiped it. <laughs> you have no memory, no memory of the that. accident at all? No. Taking in the panorama, Sam leant back on a railing. The wooden supports were rotten and it gave way, sending her backwards onto concrete two storeys below. I heard this terrible sound of the railing giving way or hitting the ground. And um, I just turned around and Sam, Sam was gone. Did you think she was going to die? Yeah, well, not right then, but well, then, maybe within like a few minutes, this pool of blood just started, you know, coming out from Sam's head, and um, it was it was just really awful. So the boys were there; they saw everything. Yeah, one of them said, "Ribs, ribs, ribs said, is mummy going to die?" What do you remember about what happened? The only thing I saw was Mum's legs fall over the balcony. That's the last thing I remember. I can still kind of picture it in my mind, to be honest, like of what I kind of saw that day. You still kind of think about it. Sam was raced to hospital, underwent several surgeries before being medevaced to Australia, where a doctor at Royal North Shore Hospital told her her spine was severed. I just asked him, I said, will I ever walk again? And he just said, no, you'll never walk again. And I just pulled the sheet over my head and burst into tears. And I never saw him again. He's delivered to you straight. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, I was devastated. Mm. I think I cried every day for the first month in North Shore. So I couldn't help it. I was so, I was just gutted. Mm. Those first few days, weeks and months. Yeah. Did you go to a pretty dark place? Yes. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to die. I wish I'd died. Yeah.
How bad was it when she first came home in those first few months? Didn't really want to see anyone, didn't want to see any friends, just kind of wanted to be by herself. Did you worry about her? Yeah, a bit. I just wanted to be, her to be happy and just like that fun mum she was. Yeah. What do you miss about that old life? I miss everything. <laughs> mm. I miss me. Yeah, because I, I know I was happy. I was happy and I was, guess I was content with who I was. And but I, do you not feel like yourself no, anymore? No, I'm not the same, no. I always feel guilty, like, um, not being the mum I thought I would be. You know, I thought I'd be happy and, and, and easygoing and... I don't know, but I'm not, I'm not that anymore. Mm. Right, uh, come on, Noah. Come oh. <laughs> on. Sam couldn't hide from the reality of her injury. And as much as Cam and the boys tried, they just couldn't reach her. In her mind, she was merely a spectator in her own family's life. And then a broken little bird came into your lives. Yeah, yes. And did what? She brought a bit of happiness, which was so missing, and laughter. Penguin became the sixth and much cherished member of the Bloom family. Rescued as a baby by Noah after she fell from her nest and injured her wings. Wait, how'd you come up with the name? Um, well... Uh, well, it's black and white, and then it waddled a bit <laughs> when I was young, so we just called it Penguin. In nursing Penguin back to health, Sam found a purpose. When we did find Penguin, and the boys would go to school, and Cam would go to work, and it was just Penguin and I, and she made me feel like um, I wasn't as useless, because... I had to look after her, I had to feed her and, and care for her. And she just, Your nurturing instinct kicked yeah, in. Yeah, kicked in. And I would just talk to her all the time. I'd whinge to her, you know, and tell her everything that was going through my head. And I, was she a good listener? She was a very good listener, yeah. She never complained. <laughs> um, I don't know, I think animals are really healing. Like, there's something about them 